Welcome to Grab Reload, I'm Anthony and AMD wanted to show off their gaming side at E3. AMD came out at E3 here and really just talked about the finishing up of what's all going to be released on July 7th and one product in September of their CPUs and GPUs. So we have the on the CPU side we have the now almighty 16 core 32 thread mainstream processor that it boosts all the way up to 4.7 gigahertz with a base of 3.5 for seven hundred and fifty dollars so that's a quite a bit of money i bought my 16 core for a thousand so that's still an improvement over that but in a mainstream desktop that's a quite expensive processor overall but if we drop down we already knew about the um so that is the R9 3950X is the 16 core, but we already knew about the 12 core R9 3900X. So that's still a nice sweet spot, 499, uh, 105 watts as well as the 16 core on the TDP. And that's gonna be another great gaming CPU. AMD was showing it off in gaming. And I think that's one reason why they announced stuff at E3 here rather than at Computex is that they really wanted to go and show off gaming. I mean, Intel is going through and talking up a storm about how their products are, you know, put up or show up. They were talking AMD. I almost feel like it's kind of like poor Navi. I, I, I was thinking that was good that the uh, marketing people from <laughs> uh, AMD went to Intel and then I thought they would, you know, have some little guidance at Intel, maybe change it, but maybe that didn't happen. Hmm. And then we jump down into the 8 core 16 threads, and AMD has two of those. So the R7 3800X, and then one step below that is the R7 3700X. But then they finished out with the two 6 cores, which is the R5 3600X and the R5 3600. And so the, the 3600X is $250, and then the r5 3600 is 200 so amd has a full stack on now all the way from like 200 bucks that going all the way up to that six core 750 dollars and a lot of cpus are sold in that 200 250 300 dollar range so like if you want to spend just over 300 bucks you know that r7 3700x is going to be a perfect match for you if you're in that 200 250 the range you get to choose between the 3600 and the 3600X. They also have two APUs that they did as well, four cores, four threads, and four cores, eight threads. Um, but they weren't using Zen 2 for the CPU side. But So there's a nice stack. I think AMD's going to have some great performance overall on these processors. I'll be waiting for some testing of them as well. That'll be fun to watch, but I'm not going to tell you to wait for testing. You can make your own decision with your own money, and if you want to pre-order, go for it. If you want to wait, it'll be fun to see where, where they these processors lay out over time. And so, a few other things about there is that AMD was showing off these tests on the CPU side, and they were doing, um, they had Intel test systems versus their own test systems, right? And they did not do it with the May 2019 update. They also didn't do it with the mitigations on the Intel system. So... A lot of people are saying, well, AMD can make this look even better on their stuff, but if tr truly stated from what they've said is that they didn't have the mitigations and they weren't using the May 2018 or 2019 update for Windows, it looks like they weren't really trying to go out of their way to make it their systems look better. They were just using what they had there. And the reason why I mentioned the May 2019 update is that they've Windows, Microsoft has now finally put some improvements in for the Zen Core, so it should work much better. Um, we're boosting up the full clocks and everything else. There's also a lot of DDR improvements in these processors, and I'm really excited to see where that puts these overall, what you're able to do with overclocking RAM and getting the RAM to work as well. So there's not really too much to say about it. We got our 16 core CPU in the mainstream socket. The socket upgradability of AM4 is still here. So we got three generations and we're still using the same socket. So AMD has kept to the word of being able to use the same socket. And I congratulate them for that. I think that's great. And I, hopefully Intel takes a note of that and says, we're gonna copy AMD and do that so people can stay into our platform. Cause I think that's a great, um, 
um, thing to have and it's a, as a user of the products and a buyer I like to see that because that means if I actually do want to a lot of times I don't upgrade CPUs but if I do want to I can and I don't have to worry about a whole new board and everything else because I probably gonna upgrade my media center at some point and that would just be a swap out for a new CPU so that's really cool but let's get into the GPU this is really controversial a lot of people are talking about it and you can get on both sides of it I'm kind of more down the middle right here it's I can't get too mad at it and I can't get too over over excited about it either I'm just like yeah it's it's another GPU launch I kind of saw that you know based upon the product not releasing a whole new product stack yeah, this is what's going to happen I mean that I'll go into this a little bit later but when you don't have a full stack coming out every year when you're waiting like two years for a new product like the 10 to 20 series it just doesn't you know, there's hard things to try to do right they're trying to make up price that they money that they would lo lose out from releasing a new product and getting all that new gpus sold again so and you're not really a market leader and everything you've tried before hasn't worked so trying something different because you don't want to be insane so try something different see if it works if it doesn't work well go back to the drawing board try something else but so what amd announced of the 5000 gpu series family which that's what they mentioned at Computex, but we only heard about the 5700 and the 5700 XT. There was a 5700 Anniversary Edition, if you're interested in that. But going through the prices for these three and a little bit of specs, the 5700 is 36 CUs, uh, 2,304 streaming processors, 8 gigs of RAM, 180 watts, 17, um, 125 megahertz at $380. Then the 5700 XT that's your 2070 competitor, RTX 2070 competitor. 40 CUs, 2560 streaming processors, 8 gigs of RAM, 225 watts, 1905 megahertz boost. It is $450. The anniversary edition is basically the 5700 XT anniversary edition. Same specs as the um, X 5700 XT, a little bit higher boost for 500 bucks. And so... Yeah, I'm just going to really focus on now just the other two. I don't think the if you want the anniversary edition, go get it. But um, really, it's going to be the other two that are going to be selling. Overall, I think AMD's making a lot, quite a bit of money on this um, this product. They've probably got good margins on it since it's their new class. And yeah, they're just trying to go after where the market is currently. If NVIDIA comes out with a super line, probably going to at some point there's rumors flying around with that well you know AMD has room to move make these still competitive they did upgrade the cooler on this they did say that they're releasing July 7th they're still on the it has some new software side stuff of image sharpening response time that's not supposed to be a huge performance hit or and the response time is anti-leg stuff supposed to be improvement there but they really made sure to get away from saying that this was GCN. They made a point to say that this is our DNA, and that's going forward. So I think there was a, quite a few tweaks here, even if it could be based off of GCN and move forward. But our DNA is kind of what they're doing going forward. They're removing, they're really upgrading into a spot where they can be more. I think they're going to be more flexible with it. They're going to get it so they can be, um, they can tweak it in such a ways that it can actually be a better gaming. GPU as well as making sure there's probably still going to be compute side to it as well. I think that's what that's kind of my feeling of this is that they want to break it down and allow it to be more able to be put into the categories that they want it to be in rather than an architecture they have to fit, make fit into categories, if that kind of makes sense. So, you know, Vega was great a cute compute card that could game as well, and they want something that can do kind of more of both. And I think it's a good move by them. I think that they need to get back into a release cycle of once a year because 18 months maximum. You have to get a full stack out in a year to 18 months. And the reason why I think you need to do that is that as you start doing a full stack like that, you're able to then put more performance in each year and help drive down prices because then your competition is probably doing the same thing. But if you're at two years out and you don't really have much in, to compete against the high end and then you only release a Radeon 7, a high end card, and then you don't really have anything in the low end. So then you go out through and finally get us a 5700 after six months of the 
the 2000 series being out from Nvidia and you have two cards in that whole stack to compete okay so we, now we have three cards versus you know the 2060, the 2070, the 2080, 2080 Ti, the Titan RTX, the 1660, the 1650. You know, you have, so you, yeah, Nvidia can just go, oh yeah, we're just gonna throw out these out again. So there's, AMD has to get into that cadence of release. These prices, I would like to see them lower. I like to get the prices back down. I have a Vegas 64, I paid for it as well, and I'm not upgrading. This is not a $500 upgrade that I'm willing to pay for. It's not it's not something that I want to be, oh yeah, it's good enough, I need to replace this, right? And I wasn't going to go up and spend $700. It just was not something I was going to do. So I'm, I'll sit and wait. And if you have something you can sit and wait on, that might be the best option to help realign the market, get it back into where it needs to be. If you don't buy GPUs, they got to adjust, right? Because... Hey, we, we, we're not selling GPUs. What do we have to do here? Well, they might have to lower, finally lower prices. Maybe NVIDIA with their super line, they could get back and, and just lower the prices back down really no more, put AMD in a tough spot, make them cut this and make the Radeon 7 drop in price maybe. We'll see. But I don't have much hope in that. I think NVIDIA is going to try to release just higher tiered, better performance products at the same price points. That's kind of what I feel. I mean, NVIDIA has that. They have the mind share. They have the name right now. They have everything. And AMD is just trying to so try something different to see if it sticks. And, yeah, the downside is that we're stuck with these prices. So um, time will tell to see if that technology is all there and to see if it comes out a little bit better. But what are your thoughts? I, I think that um, I like to hear them both on the CPU and GPU side. I'm pretty excited about the G CPU side. I'm really ecstatic about that that's going to be fun to watch to see how uh intel and uh, amd go back and forth here <laughs> hopefully intel has something else uh, up their sleeve that they can release i don't have high hopes of it but i hope they do um but gpu wise i just something needs to change and this product is not going to do it and i don't think a company is going to force itself to change if they can go and pull in a nice fat margin because prices just are now so much higher than what they used to be so with that let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below yeah so and we'll go from there because i want to hear what your thoughts are actually because i have mixed feelings on this gpu i'm like i said i'm not overly enthused about it i'm not overly down on it i'm just nah yeah it's there but cpu side man 16 cores, 30 threads in the main socket, 12 cores, 24 threads for 500 bucks, 8 cores. Oh man, this is going to be fun. So, with that, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to help support Grain and Low Overload and helping this channel grow. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.